Today I went ham with my VFX trying to recreate the rooftop drone scene from Sonic. If you want to see my recreation of that effect, definitely keep watching and I can tell you it will be worth it. Ines Alea and welcome to VFX Explained, the show where we reveal the mysteries behind your favorite Hollywood effects. Um, yeah, I didn't expect much from the Sonic movie to begin with when it came out, especially because there was that media thing where they changed the entire design of Sonic, it seemed like a little bit of a mess there, but when I saw that Jim Carrey was acting in it... I was not expecting that. But I was expecting not to expect something, so it doesn't count. I was pleasantly surprised. It's actually a good movie. Anyway, let's dive into the details and see how they have done the scene. So obviously we can all agree that this was done using CGI, except for the main drone where Jim Carrey is sitting in. I thought it was completely CGI because it looked like I could replicate it, but the actual interior is a real prop, which is very logical. They put that in there for realism and also uh, for the actors to understand their surroundings surroundings and interact with them and also for light information to see how the materials would reflect in specific environments. So it's always good to have a real object on set. Anyway, we didn't have that so we had to do it all CGI, all frugal. Let's go. Yeah, hey. But how do you really start on something like this? Well, first we need to record our footage, so we did. Actually, when you record yourself or you have a bigger team that wants to follow what the cameraman is doing, I would highly suggest looking into the Mars 400S Pro. This is actually a wireless video transmitter that can transmit up to 400 feet or 100 meters. They did not sponsor this video, but they did send it over for free so I can go ahead and test it out. And I absolutely love it. So if you're on these type of shoots, link is in the description. Let's continue with the video. After that you're done recording, it's very important to grab a 360 photo of your location. And not just a regular 360 photo, but we want to have a 360 photo on multiple exposure levels. So that we can then merge these photos into a 360 HDRI map in Photoshop and then we can use that as a light source for our 3D models to look exactly like they would look if they would have been recorded on set. Because we're using the same light source as on set using the HDR method. So there you have it. <laughs> so then we need to model our drone. I actually modeled my entire drone using Cinema 4D and all the tools available in there. I did work with a symmetry object that way I basically create half of the drone and it just mirrors that exactly on the other side. So I have a complete drone and that is just very useful when I want to start animating like guns and I don't want to build a complete like rig for my drone. And actually this entire workflow was very similar to the drone that we have modeled in the Epic VFX Masterclass that I actually launched a few months ago. So that class is now completely wrapped up and oh, we've, we've built some drones over there. So yeah, it was still fresh in my mind. I'm really enjoying creating these drones and like all these students that join in the class, I was absolutely fascinated by what types of drones my students were actually creating after just like two weeks or one week after watching the course. And for example, uh, we have this drone which looks super sick and he was able to recreate this using my course, but he does have a background in engineering. So that way you kind of use all of that knowledge into recreating something in a more realistic way because he will probably be thinking of the functionality of the drone. So that's also really important. When you're modeling something, you want to think of how that model would actually work if it would be real. I didn't do that deep of a dive in this drone. I just wanted to recreate it rather quickly. So this is my final result. Anyway, if that sounds something that you would be interested in, definitely check out the link in the description. There you can sign up for the Epic VFX course. It's currently closed, but we're going to open up pretty soon. And we're actually working on something pretty epic to add on top of it. So it's going to be an entire new game. So if you want to create Epic VFX, I would highly suggest you click the link in the description, sign up, and that way you will be notified once the doors open again. It's definitely worth it. So maybe I'll see you there. For texturing, I used Octane, again, a very similar way like in the Epic VFX Masterclass. 
I also brought my HDR photos in Photoshop and I merged it into an HDRI for Cinema 4D. Now my drone looks all fancy. Then I bring my drone in Cinema 4D and start positioning the drone into my scene using a cloner so it actually looks like we have a swarm. The drone isn't rigged or anything, but I do like to have an easy rig going. So like I said, I use the symmetry to model my drone. So whenever I change one of the sides, it will also happen on the other side. So this is ideal to animate the guns coming out. I just basically put my axis at one of the guns and like just animate it coming out and it will just replicate that on the other side. That way I just had to animate three things and I ended up having six things. And then if you offset these things, it looks a little bit more organic, a little bit more realistic. Again, play with this kind of kind of spring delay effects and stuff like that. Try to make it look real. So I animated them to spike up ready for action. For making them look like they're actually hovering, I used two techniques. Whenever a drone is solo, I would add a vibrate tag to make it hover a bit. I played with the position and the timing here to make it go slow. And in the cloner, I actually used a noise map to animate the random effector. Again, playing with the speed to make it very slow. Then I come to the shot where I want them shooting at me. So here I actually composited <laughs> almost everything in AE. I was like tired of rendering in cinema and I was like, let's just fake it. <laughs> and that's another tip I want to add to this video. Like if you can fake it and and you, why not? I mean, why wouldn't you fake it? If it looks good on camera, if it looks good in the final result, why not? Just give me a reason. <laughs> the biggest takeaway here is that my rockets aren't rendered at all. So I just had this shot and then I just masked out a rocket on the side and then I animated that a rocket uh, to just move forward. And then using some motion blur, it makes it almost impossible to tell if that's a 3D render or just a 2D masked image. And then on top of that, I would add smoke. So in the end, who could really tell? I also found out uh, like being lazy makes you smarter because you're always looking for easier solutions to tackle something. So being lazy is not a bad thing if you use it in a productive way. Was that a quote? <laughs> for the smoke, I used trap code particular. I actually played around with some settings until I got something like this. Uh, it's a really powerful plugin when it comes to particles or just creating something like this. I then turned down the time factor so it's actually in slow motion and placed it on each drone. I also wanted to have some fire at the end of the rockets, so I ended up using one of our own fire packs that is now available on our website, creatorgalaxy.com. A complete pack full of diverse fire elements that you can use in any circumstance, in this case, to create rocket fire, but you can literally put your house on fire if you want to, with visual effects, just so we clear that out. So I rescaled it a little bit, proportioned it a bit into place and then turned it into a 3D object so I can also place it in the 3D space to match the perspectives of each rocket. I just did this manually, but for the rocket stop effect, I actually closed my rockets. You could do this in another way, but I thought it was just faster to just do it manually and place it everywhere, wherever I think it needs to be. So for the rocket stop effect, I actually animated my rockets and bullets coming together by actually cloning them onto a sphere and then making them face myself. By then animating that sphere to get from big to small, it actually seems that my rockets are getting closer to me. And then I just stop the animation, play with the timeline until it feels like it's actually slowly coming to a stop, like I'm stopping the time. Another cool shot was this explosion shot. For this, I actually use our explosion pack, also available with the links in the description below. To make it seem like it's actually an explosion that is happening within the 3D model, you need to have something like this, a Z-depth map. This is a black and white map that actually represents the depth of your scene. You can export this with your 3D software and you can now use this map as a luma mat for the explosion to play its part. And now if you add a little bit more contrast to that Z-depth path, you can actually fine tune where that explosion really is happening. And then by adding a perfect glow at the end of it all, you will get some really cinematic glows to make everything just look that tiny bit better. And then now, le moment suprême, we have our video. What is this supposed to mean? Tell us your VFX secrets or die. Yeah. And a cute little drone like you should scare me, huh? Terminate target. I had to say something, didn't I?
much fun to recreate an entire scene it's so fulfilling and to get all the sound effects the edit and making it all come together it's such a good practice I would highly suggest you to try and do the same I know I didn't explain every single detail in this video that would basically make it impossible for me to explain this but on the other hand if you are interested to know exactly how to achieve all these things I would highly suggest you to sign up for the epic VFX masterclass I have a link to it in the description below the doors are currently closed but we will open them up a little bit later I'm not sure when yet but if you want to make a chance of making it as one of our students just sign up there so we're not sure when but just keep your eyes open you're not going to miss it if you really want to be a part of this so don't worry too much and apart from that I hope you enjoyed this video make sure that you give it a like and subscribe to the channel it would mean the world to me and hit the notification bell to stay notified and if you want to continue watching my videos I'll prepare one for you right here just go and check that one out it's also pretty cool and apart from that i'll see you in the next one until then create epic videos